Thank you for that kind introduction, Derek. Um, I'm excited to present this, uh, and I hope I'm not I'm doing the Hack Night credit. But I guess in the spirit of the Hack Night, if you see something you don't like, then you can come and make it better afterwards. Um, anyway, so this is Project Pavement. Uh, it has a subtitle, and the bigger picture is called the Personalized Bike Routing Initiative, AKA PBR. Um, and it was created here at Chai Hack Night. And I'll kind of I'll bring in the routing at the end. But for now, let's think about pavement. So for people that are not from Chicago, and we have one person here at least, um, some bike lanes in Chicago are not good. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> and they're rainy and snowy, but not good. Um, but sometimes, you know, what's the opposite of pain points? The pleasure points. And it would be, look at that bike lane there. It's great. That one's wonderful. That one's great. All these are good. So it would be nice to know if you know there's bike lanes in the city, if you want to know if it's a good bike lane you want to ride on, or if it's a bad bike lane you want to ride on. So that, um, you know, so that's part of the question. And this kind of plays into a larger issue of why should citizens measure infrastructure themselves? And I have a very dramatic example. But this just made the news, right? And so we, you, it's important for people to go out and measure things that are around them, just because if you're the person that's benefiting from it, and it's probably important for you to have some control over that and say over that, and not just you know in policy meetings, but to get scientific information and to measure things like you know engineering. So that's the motivation. And who are these citizen scientists then that did this? It was not me. It was mainly not me. It was actually mainly this guy. Um, He's in New York City now, project pavement team, PBR, very dynamic. But the downside of working with very dynamic people is they tend to go to places. And you'll see that everybody's actually, a lot of these people are in places right now. <laughs> so anyway, Mike Lassine's in New York City. Uh, he did the Rails app and the iOS app and spearheaded a lot of this. That's his GitHub. Uh, Joshua Shin is also in New York City now. Uh, I don't know if he's still job hunting, but you should definitely, if you want an Android developer, like fresh dev bootcamp grad and just kind of took requirements from me and made an Android app all on his own. Um, it's great to work with him. Nate, and like a good dad, he is here to support <laughs> us. Do you want to wave? He's, thank you. Thank you, dad. Um, there's his LinkedIn if you want to look at it. Um, and he's a real dad who actually cycles like, and brings his kid around town. So that's kind of what we, you know, that's a nice use case. Here's Steven, who's in, uh, in somewhere in the Netherlands right now. Uh, he's also took a lot of these pictures. I was just looking online at pictures of bike lanes in Chicago, and he's a reporter. So his name shows up everywhere. If you're looking at open street map, map data, there's a good chance username Steven Vance is in there because he, he does that. Um, so he's been great. There's his website. Steven Liu, who is uh, on a plane, he told me it was a pressurized steel tube or something he was on. I assume that was a plane. It could be something else. Uh, <laughs> I, he hasn't gotten back to me. I don't know. So there's no cell reception there. Um, he did like UX, and he's done some project management stuff. So that's good. Here's me. Uh, I had a beard. No more. Uh, and here's the Smart Chicago Collaborative, who helped fund this. And that means they like paid for the Heroku space for us. So that's great. And we need to reach out to them afterwards. OK. So that's the who's who. And this is the bicycle. I wish I had a real bicycle here so that I could show you kind of what it looks like. But oh, what's that? Pete, is that you? Are you? <laughs> and get this, we have, uh, we have branded bespoke beverages here, Project PVR. Here we go. We got these custom made and brewed to specifications. <laughs> it tastes like, uh, like civic innovation, I hope. That and pee water, but it, you know, it has alcohol in it, and uh, they're to share. Mm -hmm. Enjoy some PBR during this PBR presentation. Yeah. Uh, did, did the fine folks at Pabst Blue Ribbon actually fund this? Uh, uh, no, but they, they're low prices. They're low prices, subsidies, <laughs> the long work nights required to uh, make we, this happen. Yeah. So, um, you know, mazel Cheers. Talk. Thank you, Pete. Um, and he'll show you the app. There's really not much to see, but you can see that. The app is mounted here. This is how, if you want to measure pavement data, the big thing is you need like a good measurement of how much it's moving up and down. So the solution is you essentially just attach it here. Then you measure how it's moving up and down. I'll show you some data in a second, but Should that's I how we did it. Please, please do. Give them some beers. They might enjoy <laughs> everything after that. Yeah. <laughs> 
So we don't have the case of beer here, but we do have, there's the iPhone app, there's an Android app. We have a Rails server that's up there living in the cloud. And we have an ORCRM server that I set up and that like will do routing and things like that. And we'll talk more about that later, um, the OSRM part. OK. So what's the data description? So what happens then is when you are riding around on your classy bicycle and you start your app up, every second it's going to bundle up uh, your GPS start and stop. And it's going to give 100 readings from the x, y, and the z axes. And they're concatenated together. That looks terrible. And that's what we're going to use to measure how bumpy things are. So just, you guys are going to be data scientists here. And this is one of the most important things if you do data science is to just look at your data. And you can see this one here looks like it's pretty bumpy. And this guy here looks pretty smooth. So you can see, you know, just by looking at these data points that if it's going up and down, it's probably a bad road. And if it's not going up and down, it's probably a good road. So this is intuitively what we're going to do. And we'll outline the rest of how we got there. OK? So um, your smartphone or your can of beer has three axes of motion. Um, so, so in this case, we're just plotting the z-axis. So this would be up and down. Um, so these are accelerometer readings. So it'll tell you how many gravities of force are going on. If it were constant and we were going straight up and down, that's one gravity of force. That's just, you know, you rest something that's normal force. And when you're in the air, it's going to be less than that. And when you're uh, maybe if you're like torquing down or something, it's, you're going to be accelerating a little bit harder. So that's what you're seeing. Yes, that, that's okay, correct. That's, that's, the other, that's the other input. And are you, okay, are, are you just funneling that all together, or are you doing any processing yet um, when you're sending it back? Um, right now, we're just sending all this raw data to the server, and it's all stored. If anybody wants to look at it, it's in CSVs, a classic format. Know and love it. Um, and if you don't like my measure, I would encourage all of you later to go in and use your own measure. Um, I'm not a physicist. I haven't taken a physics class in a long time. High school. Um, but you can trust what I'm saying. Um, <laughs> so this is, and this is also like the raw data. So Michael has seen how to set this up. This is a routing engine that currently we need some Rails work to go on. But later on, you actually will be able to like drag things and route over this, which will be cool. Um, but right here, you can see these are actually very small line segments. They represent the amount of distance you can cover on your bicycle in one second. And if it's red, that means it's very bumpy. And if it's blue, it means things are looking good. So the idea is we want to go from this, which looks terrible, and it's a mess, and it takes a very long time to load now. And if you go look at it, you'll see that. And we want to summarize it, because we want to know for any given uh, stretch of street, is it a good street or is it a bad street? OK. There's a link. We'll click that later, not now. OK. So we'll go a little bit into how we're justifying this roughness measure. Um, the, uh, kind of um, the way I approached it was I wanted to find pairs of readings that were close to each other. And I'll show you what close looks like. And close, I think you'll agree they're close. And then after that, we want to look at candidate roughness measures for consistency. So that means that. We would hope that if a roughness measure is good, then that means every time I ride over this stretch of road, I should get about the same measure. So that would be necessary, but not sufficient. Um, so first of all, how do we get geographically close readings? Well, the way I did it is I stuck everything into some geospatial data frames. And then you can see kind of the blue and green here. The green is one reading. The blue is another reading. It's hard to see them because they're almost on top of each other, which means I did a good job. Um, obscurity. Uh, justifies quality, as they say. Um, <laughs> no one says that. Um, <laughs> that's why we have code reviews. Uh, this is a nice one, because there's also a red one. So there's like three readings that are all on top of each other. So this is where we would like to compare whatever our roughness measure is for all these stretches of road and see if it's about the same. And we will do that in a moment. Wait, sorry, can I ask a question? Yeah. What does that mean? What did this mean? The two lines on top of so these correspond to readings. And so a reading means that I, my phone starts here at this GPS coordinate, and it records how bumpy it is. Yeah. And I'm at this coordinate. And then I'm, that's what I'm plotting. The blue line is one of those things. It, in this case, we're projecting everything onto a map. So we're taking lat long and projecting it to x, y. 
So imagine you saw the map earlier. It's the same thing. And we can talk about the math if you're into car project projections <laughs> later. Yeah, just imagine like when you look at Google Maps and you think everything's in X and Y, well, it's really just a projection onto a flat surface of a sphere. In this case, Chicago is very flat, as you know. That's, no, that's not the map, but it's, it's, it's not that big, which means we can think of it as flat. You're writing very straight. So we only, so remember, each second we can only get so many GPS readings, and so we have the GPS reading at the start and the GPS reading at the end. So by definition, yeah, this is just one second. Sorry, so do you writing over the same stretch, one second stretch, multiple times? This is just me, I'm writing, and it happened to be one day I passed over this stretch of pavement and I got a reading, and then the next day maybe the reading started here, and those, but that reading's almost the same. It's just very hard because we have all these line segments that are, if I could draw in chalk, you would see it's like all over the floor, so we need to find two of these lines which are very close to each other because those mean almost the same thing. Well, we'll get to something a little more intuitive in a second. So the first roughness metric, and I don't think this is right anymore, but this is what I used, but it's just, if you take your magnitude of your acceleration and you take the average of that, so that means the bumpier you are, um, that's the, we're gonna, I, we had to switch beers, I'm sorry. Are you sick? No. Oh, I don't know, I think I drank out of both then. Um, <laughs> Um, <laughs> so this is what it looks like if we take this measure, and what I'm going to say, the, the missing ingredient that I think we need is we need to take into account speed, because the faster you're going, the faster things tend to vibrate, and I will say that from just like an engineering standpoint, you can know that if you're like driving over a gravel road, the faster you go, what happens? You start bumping more, so you slow down when you're driving over gravel. So if we do that, and we plot these things against each other, we get a much better line. Um, we can talk more about this later, but imagine each of these are two segments which are very close to each other, and we're plotting their average bumpiness against each other, so it should be close to one. This is, you see this one right here, that's like the classical correlation you guys remember from your stats classes. So it looks good. All right, so the final comments on this roughness measure are, this is not really very good proof, as I can see from all of your puzzled faces. Really what we would like is, we would like for any given stretch of pavement, we would like somebody to give feedback for us. So this was bumpy, this was not bumpy. So you imagine you're, it's like waves for your bicycle. You're riding over a stretch of road and you can hit the smiley face if it's good or the sad face if it's bad or swipe left or right. And then you could validate this metric against that if you can tag it. Another way we could do this would be if we went out and talked to whoever the people are in charge of the roads around here, and we could, they probably have some like good engineering uh, standards for how roads are bumpy, and we could validate against that. So it'd be our cheap way of doing that. Cool. All right, here's the next part here, where we're gonna talk about snapping these data to road segments, which will be clearer, I believe. So what we did is we have all these noisy rides where GPS has some bumps to it, has a little bit of noise in it, and people are kind of swerving, maybe they're going on sidewalks, stuff like that. So we started off with this blue line right here, um, and that's, you can see it's kind of jagged, but what we want to do is we want to line it up to underlying street map data, because it's the underlying street map data that we want to know how good the road is. This will tie in later to a routing engine. So you can see sometimes this worked well, and sometimes we ended up with garbage like this, and that's the life of a data scientist. Um, Sometimes your phone may go out for a minute or something, you lost a bunch of data, and then it comes back on again. It can be a pain to do these things. So some data is good, some data is bad. I looked at it all. I won't make you look at it all, but most of it was good. All right. We don't have much coverage yet, unfortunately, which is that for most of these OSM segments, most of them we only have one reading on them. For a few of them, we have two. So we can't say that much about how much these readings agree over time yet. We need more data. And we'll also get to the more data at the end. You guys can help with that. Cool. So here's the summary. Um, whoop. OK. Great. 
So this is like the same map before, but what I did is I took for each of these road segments, I basically just averaged together the bumpiness value and got one bumpiness value. So this is what you want to show to people, right? This is our deliverable product. It's supposed to be wider where you have more data, and you can see we just have a big blop right there because we got a whole bunch of data. That might be like a mapping artifact. But this is the deliverable. Stuff that you see is red means that it's a bad street, and stuff that's blue is, means it's a good street. This red up here was, I tried to do some experiments to see what was bad, and this was awful. I was just like writing over bumps, so you can see that. So we have like a little bit of validation of that. Um, and eventually what we would like to do is we would like to overlay a routing service on top of this. So if you wanted to say, um, where am I going every day? I'm going from here to here. And it could show me routes. And then on the routes, I can be like, oh, the pavement looks good here. The pavement looks bad there. And I could see what it looks like. And underneath, we could have a routing engine that actually took all this into account. That's the PBR. Um, we have the visualization up on the website. I won't risk that right now. Cool. So now we have the ask. Um, the ask is one thing you can do is you can download the app, and you can strap on a bicycle mount. We have three of them here. If anybody wants one, you're welcome to have it. The only condition is you have to join the Slack so you talk with us afterwards. We figure out how you're collecting data. Um, if you want to help us set up a routing engine, that would be great, because we have this data now that we could route people over. We need like front-end people, back-end people. All that would be great. You can analyze the data yourself if you don't like the metric we used. Uh, pester your public officials about these bad roads, stuff, stuff like that. And if you have any patronage, by which I mean if you know any um, organizations that care about bicycles in the city, we have data we can give them now. So, yeah. Cool. And hopefully what's going through your heads right now is that congested streets, a lack of bike lanes, and speed of traffic is probably what scares you if you've ever tried bicycling around Chicago. And it's not necessarily just having really bumpy roads. So one of the things we talked about in the group was, well, now that we have a measure of how bumpy roads are, how do we get a measure of how much people like being on the roads? And it turned out the answer is that Ride Report is a different company that's doing something very similar. And in fact, if you look at this map here, and maybe I'll pull it up and show you a big one, it looks almost exactly like we d what we did, except for instead of what we did is we tell you how bumpy is a road in a given area, they're going to tell you how much were people stressed out when they rode over a given area. And so that's almost better in a way if you know, what are the scary streets? Don't go on Ashland because you're going to feel like you're going to die. Stuff like that. <laughs> um, so this is Ride Report. They're a private company. They've done like a very good job, I think, of balancing the ideas of opening up their code. Like they've shared code with us and opening up data while also like being concerned about privacy. So they want to have minimum amounts of like aggregation in a certain area before they'll release data. So that's really good. Um, and they also have a commercial dashboard that they will offer. So if you know anybody who wants like in-depth statistics on who's riding at given times, and they'll do stuff like add in weather data and things like that, that would be great. Um, so please use them. Um, it's like a set it and forget it app, so you also don't have to mount your bike on anything. You just keep it in your pocket, and then later it'll ask you, how did you like your ride? So they did a better job creating a product in some ways than the bike mount. So there we go. So a big thank you to them. This is what they look like. Here's their Twitter handles. And big thank you to the host and the sponsors. And if there's any questions, man, we did a lot of stuff. So this is our website. Here's our Rails app. Here's our Android or iPhone <laughs> app. And here's the analysis up there. And if you want data, that should be up there too. So there we go. Thank you. Yes. Did you factor for uh, higher quality and like bike style? Like if you're riding on a road bike, I would think you'd be a lot bumpier than a cruiser. Yes. So we, we, what we do have right now is we have bicycle and rider ID like mapped to something. So we'll know if you're a given person on a, different, on a given bicycle, we have that data. But we don't have enough overlapping data to really figure out that question yet. But I do have like, I have like a big thing on the back of my bike, and I rode it the other day, and I could see that there was like a lot more red. So that's for research, yeah. Um, I, sorry, behind you, Andrew. <laughs> uh, Lynn, yeah. Uh, so did you not use uh, the X, Y, and Z uh, configuration on the accelerometer? Did you not use Z at all? You just use X and Y? Or and I, so I was talking to one of my uh, 
ex-colleagues at Allstate, and he was saying probably the best way to do this is to figure out the direction of gravity and then only use that. The problem is that your phone's slightly tipping all the time. So right now, I just use the overall force regardless of direction. But that's probably not right. Yeah. And it, it seems like the Z would actually be pretty interesting because that would give you uh, actually much more so you can kind of uh, determine how people are riding on the street if they are going to get a lot to the curve and maybe avoiding things. And so the swerving is kind of somewhat like happening in Z. Um, so yeah. Just the behavior of how people ride on the street. Yeah, and these are, yeah, and, and of course there's also, you have to get worried about, since you can probably determine a lot, you can probably figure out how, who somebody is from their accelerometer data, so you probably have to be careful if we were going to expand this out, because you might be able to figure out who's riding where if we displayed it all, but that's, as of right now, it's mainly just Michael and me, so you can check the data out and we won't. <laughs> you can figure out who's who. Um, sure. Andrew. Is there any way to, like, divvy bikes could somehow be used uh, for, like, I don't know if they actually generate, or if they have, like, a, a gyro, or anything else in the bonds of your motion in them, but is there any way they can use that because they're obviously always on tall roads? That, that, would be, that would be great, yeah, if they had the technology in them to measure this. Um, I haven't, I think we've emailed them, but we haven't heard back from them yet, but that's somebody we definitely will try. If anybody knows divvy people, that would be... I would love to hear from you because that would definitely be somebody who, like a big entity that has a vested interest and has the infrastructure in place, so it's possible they could, you know, roll something out and grab this data for us. So, yeah. Oh, sorry, in the back. Uh, what's the sampling frequency in the accelerometer? Um, for an iPhone, it was 100 hertz, and I think for an Android phone, it probably depends on your model, but 100 hertz is probably more than enough to do what we need to do. Do you do a frequency analysis? Of yeah, I, I did do that. But then uh, after I figured that out, it was unclear to me like what part of the spectrum we really cared about, like what part is the bumpiness. And it seemed like, well, all of it is probably bad because you're going up and down. So that's why I just went to that overall measure. But yeah, if you're interested in it, I can show you the, there are some plots. Yeah. Cellular connection. I was wondering if any of the data is stored, like how long the data is stored on the device before getting transmitted? Uh, I have, I, I managed to not write either of these apps or the web app, so, um, <laughs> but yeah, it does seem that, yeah, you could locally, you could just log all this down and also probably would be easier in your battery life to just bundle it all up and upload it at once. I don't know, um, yeah. No yeah. Do you have a target number of participants or number of rides that you need to get the sample set of data? Um, that's a very good question. I think to get like engineering quality data, I, that seems that seems really hard. I, I mean, we this to me was just like the prototype of of figuring out like well we can map everything to a road and we actually can aggregate readings together and do stuff, but. Yeah, I'm sure like riding styles and how bumpy your bike is, like how much air is in your tires. Yeah. What about like the minimal number of passes on a certain scratch? You said you did usually once, maybe twice. Yeah, I, I haven't, um, that's, that's something I can probably do just by like recording myself on my commute every day back home. But yeah. So is there any other data on pavement quality besides this, or is there city data or state data, or are you really making totally new data? Um, I'm not, this is, yeah, this is about the time in the project when we're going to like sit back and assess all this, because I just kind of, this was set up and it's like, oh, we can do this, let's show we can analyze it, and now we need to figure out like, does it exist, who would find it useful, figure out like, what kind of resources we would need to push it farther forward, but like definitely, does anybody want to chime in? But somebody has to be measuring it. The Department of Transportation measures, they say they measure a lot of residential streets as well as arterial. Arterial, mm. they've got to do. Uh, residential, I doubt that they do, but they say that they do it once every two years or so. Um, but that information needs to be approved. OK. Oh, LIDAR. Yes. Yeah. 
and there are, there's like two different measures of pavement quality, and one measure is the underlying, like the concrete below the pavement, and one measure is the surface quality. And that, that comes up. Some of that data is on IDOT's website. What lessons did you learn from Ryan before? Oh, uh, I mean, a, the big thing they did was they, they helped me uh, tweak the code base so that we could use OSRM to snap all of our rides to streets to give in like OSM segments. So I learned that lesson from them. They also were talking about how to make things run in the background and like the stuff about data aggregation. And they, they also like kind of were telling me about there's like different standards for open data right now. Like open source, everybody knows what open source is. You know, your GPL, or your MIT, and the code's up there. But kind of listening to them, it was interesting to figure out like what can be anonymized. Like um, another thing they were offering is like if they have all this data, they may provide like a service where people can upload their own routing profiles and use their data. So that would, that would be one way they would give back to the community. But it seems data is like precious and it's worth a lot of money and it's, I, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. Well, so I'll be honest with you. I have broken uh, a friend's smartphone screen. Uh, it's I know it's like there's I, it's very nerve wracking for me. It's because you're exposing your phone on your bicycle, and you're also like eating up the battery life. And there's also we don't we don't provide any value for you right now. Like you just have to really care. So I'm sure there are those people out there, but we don't. It will it definitely is like a charitable donation. So. That's why it's nice listening to Ride Report do their thing, because they like will give you like achievements and stuff, and it's like, yes, I would like to be able to track my rides and get statistics and things like that, but that requires you to have developers, and developers need to get paid. So, yeah, if you want to talk about that later, though, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, I, I think, yeah, I don't. I'm really hoping like some if somebody thinks this is interesting, like some nonprofit who is like good at getting the word out and can help that go along. Have you checked other mount points besides the handlebars? Uh, I have not. No, that I don't. Yeah, where would you mount I it? Mean, I'm not necessarily mount it, but you know, I like a lot of people have racks. And, you know, if you put it in a bag on your on your a rack. Yeah, yeah I, I think the thing you have to be worried about is if you're in a bag, it might yeah. it, it moves around a little differently. Like it may get some free fall where so. I, I don't know really what do you want. You want something like probably just attached to the metal that's a sensing vibrations, I guess. I don't, that, maybe that's not too expensive to get like, get something like that and just have it Bluetooth with your phone. I don't know, yeah. Have you talked to Active Transportation Alliance? We have, and they were actually the people that said, what do you really want? And they're like, well, what we really want is a stress map of the city and Ride Report's doing it. And so that's how we, we were shopping it around. We found out the ride report was really kind of what they wanted. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, what's the minimum support of Android versions? Do you know? Say that again, please. Like, which version of Android is like the lowest? You'd have to ask Joshua about that. I, it was miraculous. He just came in and did everything. I know it supports like my phone, because that's what we tested it on. So, like, S5. And it doesn't work on Pete's phone. Uh, I have Galaxy S3, and that's cool. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Thank awesome. you.